this is Dr. Jeffrey Moss, and I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Moss Minutes. And what I'd like to talk about today is something I've really never talked about before, but has certainly been in the news, uh, not only recently, but in the last two or three years or so. And what brought this to my mind was an article that appeared uh, in our local newspaper, the Daily Hampshire Gazette. This is December 22nd of this year, uh, entitled, Teens and Supplements, an Unhealthy Mix. And as the title suggests, uh, it, it's talking about the efforts, primarily young boys uh, who are involved in athletic endeavors, uh, trying to improve their performance, and uh, results suggesting are primarily negative. And they looked at it from, from a negative standpoint in, in three primary areas. Uh, number one, and this of course we've certainly heard about, is some of the significant health risks. And largely this is coming from products that are tainted. Uh, that have uh, uh, tainted with steroids, uh, sometimes stimulant types of herbs. Much of this may not even be on the label. And of course, there is no defense for this. And uh, the FDA is beginning to come down on this. Uh, hopefully, they will come down even harder on this. Again, this is a deplorable type of thing. There is no excuse. Uh, the manufacturers, uh, you would think that they would know what they're doing. They would think they would know what's in their products. Certainly, if they're doing GMP work, they would know, and this practice needs to be eliminated. No excuses. Now, the other area they talked about of using substances such as creatine and protein, but the problem with using it in excess. And to that, I'll say what I've always said. Uh, everything on earth, will cause, including water, will cause a problem used in excess. So it has to be used intelligently. And the third area that they talked about that can be a potential problem is that uh, teenage boys, young athletes, will tend to use supplements uh, as a replacement for healthy diet. And as you've heard me say many times, supplements are just what the word says. They are supplemental. And they work best when they complement a healthy diet. And of course, that is an issue that does need to be addressed. But the real issue that needs to be looked at that was touched on in this article is, does it work? Can you take someone who is already reasonably healthy, well-trained, a top-flight athlete, can you take a supplement and make them, will they perform better? This has been researched quite extensively, and the answer pretty much is no. It doesn't work, taking a supplement when somebody is already performing uh, at, at top levels already. But does that mean we're now going to relegate nutritional supplementation for the athlete to the trash heap? No. And I'll tell you why. Teenage boys may not think about this because they think they're indestructible. But most athletes know, and the teenagers find out sooner or later, that they aren't. And inevitably, injuries are going to occur. And when it comes to really excellence, longevity, really lasting as an athlete, the real secret is not maximizing performance, but what is it? It's basically improving injury repair and repair time. A lot of these events occur on weekly cycles, getting back onto the field, back onto the hockey rink, back onto the baseball diamond uh, within, before the next game. That seems to be the real issue that comes into play in terms of maximizing performance. And can nutrition be helpful in that aspect uh, of really improving uh, uh, healing time and even preventing injury in the first place? You bet it can. Now, there's a couple of books I want to tell you about that really gives a, a nice overview of what I'm talking about. first one I want to mention is a recently published book. This is called Scientific Evidence for Musculoskeletal, Bariatric, and Sports Nutrition by Ingrid Kolstad. And uh, there's a chapter in here uh, entitled Muscle Strain, and it really does a very nice job of, number one, going over what happens with muscle injury. And they say muscle strain, and I can tell you, if the athlete is feeling pain after the event, even slightly, there has been an injury. With that comes inflammation. With that comes free radical activity. With that comes a need for repair. And nutrition can be very helpful. For example, we can use enzymes. Now, that isn't mentioned in this book, but the other book I'm going to talk about. We can use enzymes early on to reduce the inflammation. We can use antioxidants to help reduce the free radical activity. And also they talk about something I've mentioned many times, this issue of whenever you have stress, when you have an injury, you have a state of metabolic acidosis, which can occur in the muscle. 
and using proper fluid and electrolyte balance, and of course, as we know, these athletes are already challenged in terms of fluid and electrolytes due to their act increased activity. Can we use potassium magnesium to help increase repair? Can we use preventively proper potassium magnesium nut uh, nutrition and uh, proper fluid intake to help increase muscle strength to reduce uh, the likelihood of injury? You bet we can. Now, so a book that talks about this more expansively, and this has been around for a while, but it's still in press, is Nutrition Applied to Injury Rehabilitation and Sports Medicine by Luke Bucci. And this book talks expansively about how to use nutrition, goes into great detail, for example, on use of enzymes, use of substances like, such as glucosamine sulfate, uh, chondroitin, to help with repair. So yes, there is a lot that we can do. Uh, for these athletes, because the real issue, as I mentioned, in terms of longevity, performance, is preventing injury and dealing with injury when it occurs. And in that situation, yes, nutrition really can, and supplementation really can, improve athletic performance. This is Dr. Jeffrey Moss. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Moss Minutes. I look forward to talking to you on the next edition.